What is going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our coverage over the Ultimate Marvel Universe. And we're going to pick up with the Ultimate X-Men one more time and cover World War X. Let me tell y'all, this book is it's wild in a bad way. Because this is Jean Grey versus Kitty Pride. This has been coming for a while now and it's finally here. So if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. Now we see in the beginning of our video, we see Jimmy Hudson telling Kitty that he is leaving her side, which is shocking because how much he cared for Kitty throughout this entire run. He tells her that it is because he was built as a weapon. Then we see that Utopia has continued to grow. Things are actually coming together for the mutant race here. We see that Storm and Black Heat are going forward with the idea of them being a couple, which is honestly great for them. But we then see Colossus finally come to Utopia. Remember, after breaking out of the camp, he did not want to come to Utopia because he murdered someone and did not want to bring any heat to the nation. The biggest thing about this opening scene, we see Mach 2 chilling on the edge of Utopia. She senses something kind of metal coming towards her and she stops it, but she sees a bomb on there and it explodes. The next morning, we see that Mach 2 is okay, but we also learn that she was able to find Farbird in the sky and bring him down. Remember that Farbird is one of the mutants that belonged to Jean Grey in the country 10. He was the one who dropped the bomb for Jean Grey, but the bomb he dropped wasn't to kill anyone, but to actually kill the sentient seed. The sentient seed was made by the mutants of Utopia. They were originally hoping to help in world hunger. Then after humans kind of said no, well the first seed was used had grown into a full grown jungle all over Utopia, bringing a ton of resources for the mutants of Utopia. Now with it dying, Rogue is angry because she had a bond with the seed. Kitty is furious because this is Jean Grey declaring war between Tien and Utopia. The story does change over to Jean Grey as she is having a meeting with Firestar and Guardian. These two characters plus Jean Grey were on a team called Ultimate X and when Jean Grey actually became the leader of Tien, they began to disagree on the future of Tien. They don't agree with Jean Grey actions because they know that she's really just doing this because Utopia is gaining ground on popularity over Tien. Jean Grey hates that because Tien came first as a mutant nation. She thinks everyone should come here rather than Utopia. She is basically jealous. Either way, that is when she tells Firestar and Guardian that she released a group of robot soldiers that the Zorn brothers have made just in case they are needed for a war. Well, the war is here. Now getting back to Utopia, we see that Storm is outside minding her business just trying to have a good day. Except that is when she sees an army of Zorn brother robots heading towards her. So of course, she tries to handle this problem by herself. But of course, there are too many for her to handle. It seems like Storm might die right here. 
Lucky for her, she is saved by Colossus. Remember that he finally came to Utopia to be part of the nation. At first, I thought this was going to be like his death moment. I don't know why, because again, there are so many and he tells Storm to go back to find some help. And so the first chapter closes with Storm getting back to the camp to tell everyone what is happening. Except at that moment, you have Kitty Pryde wondering where in the world is Jimmy at? He did leave at the beginning of this book. Well, we see that back at 10, he has joined Jean Grey's side. The big question again is why did this man join Jean Grey's side for? We see that quickly he is accepting the open arms Jean Grey is giving him. She invites him to dinner. This is not the first time Jean Grey and Jimmy Hudson have met. They have met before. We see them talking about the sentient seed, how strong the seed is. But Jimmy doesn't know that Jean Grey has sent a bomb to slowly kill the seed. We see that Rogue is trying to help the seed stay alive. Of course, the seed is dying because whatever poison Jean Grey sent is too hard for the seed to survive. Back on Utopia, we see all of the mutants who can fight. Well, the ones who can fight against the army of Zorn robots. For Kitty, to her, this is never going to end. The idea of war. How many times have they come to a point they think they are finally safe only for another battle to come to their front door. Except this time, it is a war between their own people. Something that should not happen. A war between the mutant race. Making the mutant race look divided doesn't help the mutant race at all. You then have Jean Grey have the robots stop and begin to talk through them to send a message that Utopia will not be the leading nation, that Tien will be the one in charge and they need to give up. Except you have Kitty Pryor respond by saying that Jean Grey has messed up. With her attacking the seed, the seed was to them part of their community, and now she is dying. So Kitty says violence will be met with violence, and you have Storm kill all of the robots off in one strike. To Jean Grey, what Kitty Pryde just did is so wrong that to Jean Grey, she just murdered a group of people, even though they were robots. That makes Jean Grey angry, and so what she does next is says that she is going to attack Kitty Pride in a different way. She asks how much America likes Utopia, and Jimmy tells Jean Grey that Utopia is very respected by America now. That gives Jean Grey an idea. You have Jean Grey go to the media to paint a picture that all of the mutants in Utopia are dangerous and violent. She asks the world to let Tien be the one to handle this mutant problem. Jimmy tries to tell her what she just did is dumb. But Jean Grey responds by saying that there must be some part of him that agrees that what Jean Grey is doing is right since he is here with her and he is not back at home with Kitty Pryde. Back on Utopia, we get to see this moment to see how powerful the character Magma truly is. We met her earlier in this series. Her powers are based around geokinetics, meaning that she changes the lands around her, like adding mountains, making a spring. To Mag 2, Magma should be also on the front line because of how powerful she truly is. We then see Colossus meeting up with Kitty Pride, and this is important because remember that this man had murdered someone, not just anyone, but a very important person. Kitty Pride says she understands that, but she did not call him up here to talk about that. She came here to talk about the fact that she wants Colossus to lead Utopia, to be in charge of Utopia. Now you have Kitty Pride respond to Jean Grey's latest schemes by sending Storm over to Tien to cause a crazy storm around Tien. 
Of course, Jean Grey is having a hard time trying to stop Storm, but this storm that Storm is causing around Tien is so crazy that even the news are reporting it. This is Kitty Pride literally saying that since Jean Grey is trying to go to war, every time Jean Grey tries something, Kitty Pride will do something in return, just building up to the idea of the Big Bang to come in this war. The next section of this story is where we see Jean Grey and James Hudson having dinner. This dinner is where Jean Grey learns that James Hudson was never on her side. That really he came here hoping to stop the war between the two sides. But when Jean Grey began to speak about killing off Kitty Pride to win this war, that is where Jane Hudson thinks Jean Grey is going too far and he actually tries to kill Jean Grey. Of course he can't, but this is Jean Grey telling James that he better make a choice on the side he is on because she will send more of the Zorn robots to kill him. Now getting back to Utopia, we learn that with everything that is going on at the moment, Kitty Pride has ordered everyone who is not going to be fighting to hide underground while the rest who are going to fight in the war to get ready. But this leads into Kitty Pride sitting down and talking to Rogue about what they should do to Jean Grey, since Rogue is having a hard time dealing with the fact the seed might die thanks to Jean Grey poisoning it. Where you have Ro tell Kitty Pride to go ahead and get revenge against Jean Grey. To the point, if Jean Grey asks for a deal, there won't be a deal anytime soon. The next section is more of Kitty Pride telling everyone that she is going to step down as the leader of Utopia. Her reasoning is because she is hated by so many people and she makes Utopia look bad. So her idea is to put Colossus in charge and tell you the truth, this is dumb because she puts him in charge for the reason he will represent someone who is strong and terrifying. Of course, everyone is upset by this, but in reality, it is a done deal and everyone has to get over it. This leads into Colossus getting ready for the war by meeting up with Mach 2 and Shola. We see them telling Colossus that they have made weapons out of small rocks that can be shot at a very high speed. To Colossus, this is going to be the way to bring down Jean Grey. You will see what I mean here in a minute or so. But yeah, rocks are being used as missiles will be coming very soon. The closing part of the third chapter, we see Jean Grey going to a prison cell, and of course, it is Jimmy Hudson's cell. We now know that he did not choose to work with Jean Grey, and she does not like that. So what she is going to do is control his mind to make him be a feral beast. She will also tell everyone on Tien that he is actually a monster from Utopia, making it seem like Kitty Pride has sent another attack from Utopia and this time it is Jimmy Hudson. So we see her release him and she sends him out there as a feral beast. So we then see Kitty Pry having a small moment where she is thinking about how she feels about different things that had happened so far in this entire run. Honestly, this is not important. It is just her thinking back to everything and then you have Colossus appear to tell her that it is time to have a war meeting. So moving on. Getting back to Tien, we see Wolverine going around being a feral beast and everyone coming at him to stop him. Now you have the Guardian actually try to talk to James Hudson because they know each other, hoping to get through him and have him calm down. But of course, it doesn't work at all. We just see him taking on an army of Tien mutants left and right. This book does give us a lot of pages of this battle, but it ends with Wolverine being knocked out by one of them. So that is the end of James Hudson for this chapter. 
well, this moment. Now, there is a moment where we learn that Farbird apparently was let go from Utopia and he actually was sent by Jean Grey to go take down Storm. This is honestly a funny moment for me because I don't like this character at all. He goes to take down Storm and she does try to fight back, except it seems that he might actually win this battle, but that is when he runs into a plane in the sky. Some of the debris from the plane actually stabs him and kills him. So there goes Farbird. Getting back to Jean Grey, actually, we see the people of Tien bring back Jimmy Hudson, who is knocked out. Then you have Jean Grey decide that it is time for her to go ahead and kill off Jimmy Hudson. Lucky for him, you have Firestar and Guardian come in to stop Jean Grey. They have been thinking that she's going too far with this war. But since she's now killing people, well, it is time for her to stop. So you have Firestar kind of stand up to Jean Grey, and we know she does not really stand a chance against Jean Grey at all. Back on Utopia, we see that Kitty Pride and the people of Utopia are getting ready to bring down Tien. Now, their goal is not to kill everyone on there, just bring down the country. The weapon they have built is going to help bring down Tien, but we also get introduced to Pixie. She looks like a pixie, but the biggest thing about her is that she has the ability to teleport, which you have her teleport Kitty Pride over to Tien for the final battle. That is when we see, of course, Firestar had lost the battle. She wasn't killed, lucky for her, except after she was saved by a Guardian, well, Pixie appears to tell them the plan is to get everyone off Tien right at this moment. Pixie needs their help to accomplish this task, but that is when Kitty Pride confronts Jean Grey for the final battle of this entire run. Before we can see that battle, we have to see that Pixie is actually bringing back waves and waves of people from Tien over to Utopia. Colossus plan to get rid of Tien, but he doesn't want to be labeled as a murderer. So instead, he brings everyone over to Utopia to survive. Now you have Blackheap tell us that the sentient seed is dead, that it is more brain dead than actually dead, that the seed will continue to grow but it is more of now has to actually be taken care of now it doesn't have a mind of its own anymore and rogue is heartbroken so of course now we get to go back to the big battle between the two big stars of the book honestly this fight should have been over at the moment it started because of how powerful Jean Grey truly is except for the sake of the story we are going to pretend that Jean Grey is not a powerhouse of a character since we see that Kitty Pride is actually able to hold her own against Jean Grey. Again, we have seen Jean Grey holding on to the powers of the Phoenix at one point in this universe. Again though, we are going to avoid that because at the end of this fight, we see Jean Grey actually being able to be defeated by Kitty Pride. Now the problem Kitty Pryde has is that she doesn't make sure that Jean Grey is actually knocked out. When Kitty goes to check up on Jimmy, only to find out that he is okay, well Jean Grey comes back to knock out Kitty Pryde, and when Jean Grey thinks that she has everything under control now, that is when Jean Grey finds out that everyone on Tien has left and Pixie is getting Kitty Pryde and Jimmy Hudson back to Utopia. That is when we see that Colossus has released the Utopia secret weapon. All of those rocks are being sent as missiles, so many are being sent to bring down Tien. And you would think this means the end for Jean Grey on Tien, because she is the only person left on the island, except it doesn't. For Jean Grey, she does get saved at the very last second by Storm, I think. And then Pixie comes out of nowhere to bring her back to Utopia because Kitty Pride did not want any deaths on her hand at all. So she made sure to save Jean Grey one way or another. 
Really, the book closes on Jean Grey being accepted by the people of Utopia, and she gets to stay there as well. They kind of accept her, but really in arm's reach. They still don't really trust her. Also, for Kitty Pride, none of the mutants will be charged with anything for their war across the globe. Governments are happy that Jean Grey and Tien is gone. And that is the end of Ultimate Comics X-Men. Yes, I do know I kind of rushed through this book, but honestly, I say rush through this book. Who butcher that. But yeah, I did rush through this book because honestly, this is just Jean Grey being jealous. And I honestly felt like this book was kind of just average. But this is the end of Ultimate Comics X-Men. So if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.